The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So, The last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, visit us with the overpowering and life-changing grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. So here's a story that I heard at men's Bible study this week that I share with permission. A man was in the car in the drive through line at McDonald's, and the car behind him was honking impatiently, hoping to speed up the line so that they could order sooner. The man in the car got to the payment window and said, I'd like to pay for my own meal, and for the car behind me. And then the man got to the food window and said, I'd like my meal and the meal of the car behind me that I paid for. So he got both meals and drove away. (laughs) Happy that the car behind, the rude car, would have to get back in line, wait longer, and reorder. To be clear, Randy Churchill, who told this story, was not the one who did it. (laughs) No one at men's Bible study would do that. In fact, no one at Mount Cross would ever do that. You would stop with paying for the meal of the person behind you, right? And let them have it, blessing those who persecute you. But I tell this story because didn't you want it to have a better ending? I did. Didn't you want to hear a gracious story instead of a vindictive one? I did. But this story exposes something about human nature, doesn't it? Something that, if we are honest, we can all relate to, even if we wouldn't pull that stunt in the drive through line. It shows us that there is a part of the human heart that is not 
merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and relenting in punishment. Our scripture readings today give us two other stories that expose the underbelly of our human nature. In the first reading, we think that Jonah might celebrate that his eight-word sermon, four days more and Nineveh will be overthrown, eight words, he, you would think, would celebrate that it worked because the whole city repented after he preached and God changed God's mind and did not destroy them. Isn't that a prophet's dream? Everyone they preached to returned to God. But Jonah sulked. Jonah wanted to see some hellfire come down on Nineveh. To be fair, the Assyrians, Nineveh was the capital of Assyria, weren't known for being nice guys. Historically, they were brutal enemies of Israel. But we are told after Jonah preached, they turned from their evil ways and the violence in their hands, and God spared them. Jonah was so mad he wanted to die. And he said, I knew it, God. That's why I went the other way when you called me to go to Nineveh. That's why we had the whole swallowed up in the belly of the whale spit out on the shore episode, because I knew that you would be kind and merciful to my enemies, and I wanted none of it. When you're kind and merciful to me, it's one thing, but when they are in your good graces, I can't stand it. And we're meant to laugh a little bit, right? There's some exaggerating in the story of Jonah, but we're also meant to see ourselves. And God responded to Jonah, Jonah, you cared about the bush, the tree, that you only knew for one day. Imagine how much I cared for all the people in, those city, in the city. And there are 120,000 people who do not know their right hand from their left, and also many animals. Don't miss this. Who doesn't know their right hand from their left? Children. Little ones. People who are cognitively impaired. And God said, I love your enemies, Jonah, and their children and all their animals. Jonah's story exposes how small and selfish our human hearts can be, and in contrast, how wide and merciful and gracious and tender is the heart of God to everybody. And then in our gospel, Jesus tells a parable that offends many of us every time we hear it, and many of us have heard it since we were young. It offends those of us who are so proud of our work ethic, those of us who hardly ever call in sick, those of us who do things by the book. This parable offends us, even if we don't admit it. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who paid everyone the same regardless of how long they worked in the vineyard. The ones who worked all day got what they agreed to, a full day's wage, which would have been fine with them until they saw that those who only worked an hour also got a full day's wage. Not because they deserved it, but because the landowner chose to be generous. Can't we just be happy for them? Those people that didn't earn it, but got a full day's wage, can't we just be happy for them? Usually not. That shows something about our hearts, doesn't it? And why do we identify with the ones who worked all day long with the deserving ones. 
and not the undeserving ones. Isn't that curious? Why are we so quick to think we earned what we have and other people got a free ride? Is this scripture showing us as in a mirror some things that may be unflattering? That's one of the gifts of Holy Scripture. It shows us who we are. And Jesus masterfully in this parable at the same time, all at once, exposes us and the grace of God. Jesus shows us the truth about the resentments we harbor and the truth about God's mercy. God is generous and merciful and loving to all equally, not because anyone deserves it, but because that's how God chooses to be. Generous and merciful and forgiving. That is just how God is, Jesus teaches us. God just gives. Even to the petty, even to the resentful, even to the vindictive, God is gracious and generous. And that is good news for us if we have recognized ourselves at all in Jonah or in those hard-working vineyard workers. The only hope for our small and offended hearts is to encounter the overpowering love, the mercy that doesn't keep score, the grace that gives itself away, and that is Christ. And that's why we're here, to meet Christ, to meet that love and that grace and that mercy, to be grafted into that heart that is so expansive that it includes Jonah and all the people of Nineveh and their animals, that includes us who earned and deserve everything we have or think we do, and includes those who got a break or those who need another chance. Be warned, though, That when you meet this Christ, when you meet this love, it will change you. It changes us. It changes the way you treat the people who live under your roof. It changes the way you treat the rude car behind you in the drive-thru. It changes the way you think of the immigrants at the border. This expansive love changes us. We will begin to live generously simply because that's what we choose to do and that's who we are. Thanks be to God. Amen.